This one's gonna be a real quick one. I've got a new meter here that I got from Banggood. This is a Win Apex 189D. It's a digital multimeter. Six counts on the meter. And what's unique about this one is it'll measure up to 20 amps of current, whereas most meters top out at 10. This one will do 20. Only it'll do it for 10 seconds, but it'll do it long enough that you can get a, an accurate read on the amount of power that's being drawn from an appliance. Let's check this one out. This should be a relatively short video, I would think. This is a new multimeter that I got from Banggood. It's a Win Apex, and uh, it's true RMS, AC DC voltage, AC DC current. That's got a backlight for the display, a non contact voltage detector, and it'll display frequency as well for your AC. And it says rotary knob multimeter. This is the the meter here with that uh, will throw these instructions out because I can't read them but at least it does come with an English manual so we can look at the specs this this one will register up to 20 amps on the ammeter portion it's fused it says 20 amps maximum time 10 seconds when you're at full power you see it says maximum measured pressure maximum measure pressure current uh, input 20 amps not exceeding 10 seconds and it's a overload protection is a 20 amp 250 volt ceramic speed fuse so um, it'll measure uh, frequencies up to one kilohertz 40 hertz to one kilohertz and that's for that's for a uh, sine wave and triangular wave input and other waveforms to 200 hertz so square wave and stuff up to 200 hertz Anyway, let's look at the meter itself. We'll dig it out of here. Get rid of that. Got some probes. And I'm sure I'm going to have to put batteries in it. This got delivered today. Someone showed up in a Tesla and they threw it at the door. Contractors for Amazon driving their own personal vehicle. And they, they didn't even come in the driveway. The guy literally threw it from the street. I was watching on my security cameras as I was doing some other work and I saw this car pull up. Who's pulling up in my driveway? And uh, this guy gets out and literally takes about two steps into the driveway and tosses this, slides it up to the front door. That's how they treat your packages. Should be a battery that goes in here, I believe. Yep. It takes two double a batteries there's the fuse so you can replace the fuse if you pop it the 20 amp fuse a couple of double a batteries i'll test it alongside of the fluke it's in auto right now oh what is this does it have a flashlight on here press and hold the power button to turn it off press and hold the power button to turn it on it looks like it has a, a flashlight there's an led on here You can change individual, you can set it on auto or you can set individual uh, voltages if I zoom the camera in so you can see what it's showing up here. So there's a little indicator here that moves around as you turn the dial. That's auto range and that's a 100 mega ohm range, 6 mega ohm, 600k, 60k, 6k, 600 ohms. Your diode test and then here's the the current reading source AC current I think that's AC oh, that's DC current it tells you right here and this one's AC current it tells you right there what you're on frequency this is for checking for live circuits I take it it's the probe that you just plug into something and the neutral side doesn't do anything you see that's to identify your live wire. You can probably use either probe. Yeah, either one. Either probe you can check. So that's the live setting. NCV, of course, is non-contact voltage. The sensor is right here. And you bring it near a live wire. And it will start to beep. Oh, and you can switch modes also by pushing the button. 
and that will switch the modes around or turn the dial either way it has a capacitance meter as well and voltage meter so I'm going to put it in auto and we're going to we're going to check some voltages so if I put it in auto what happens if I stick it into the power will it automatically detect that it is 120 volts AC yes it does so I don't even have to check I don't have to select AC or DC voltage I can just plug it in and it will automatically pick the correct mode I set my power supply 5.1 volts we'll bring the fluke meter in and we'll clip on the fluke meter and we'll just check some voltages here oops five point one volts on the fluke and I've got my probes reversed <laughs> five point one volts if I turn the meter up or turn the power supply up I'll set it to fourteen point four four 14.44 exactly the same so we know that that works again I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the meter because after all it is just a volt ohms meter so I'm going to show you guys the basic features that it has and throw the link in and um, there's really not a lot else to talk about on this thing because it's a meter We'll do some voltage or do some resistance measurements and measure a few capacitors and then we'll throw, actually, you know what? I'm going to throw it on the current meter right now and I'm going to measure something that takes over 10 amps because I know that, uh, I know that the other one, only other meters only support uh, a maximum of uh, 10 amps. Even my other fluke only supports 10 amps. So here I've got a heat gun. And I'm going to plug in one side to the power cord. The other side, I'm going to put one probe here. That's on the neutral side right now. The heat gun is turned off at the moment. We'll put the other probe onto the hot side. Okay, when I turn on the heat gun, we'll measure the current. So first, we'll put it on low. We're drawing six amps. I think we confirmed that with the other meter the other day. Here's high. 11 amps. Okay, let's measure some resistors. To get back to auto range, just tap the power button, it'll go back to auto. This will measure resistance in auto. You don't have to select anything manually. So first resistor I'm going to measure. Now these are old resistors. This one here is measuring 7.5K. Let's see what the fluke says. Seven point five K. Seven point five seven. And this one here measures 7.57. Exactly the same. Next resistor, measure this one on the fluke. 7.5. Fluke says 113.6 or 113.5k. point. Three. Close enough. And one more. It's a little lower. 273 ohms. 269 ohms. Should be 240, but this resistor is old. It's a carbon resistor. It's changed. 269 ohms. 
how does the fluke measure up? And fluke says the same thing, 270 ohms. Yeah, this resistor is um, bad. It's It's gone up in value. This is what happens with carbon resistors, right? So, ohms measurement is dead on. Next, we'll do a diode test. Oh, and of course, it'll test for shorts. It'll beep right there. It goes into ohms mode automatically and will beep. Let me just grab a transistor or two and we'll do the diode test, the junction test on here. And uh, oh, we can measure the hertz as well. If I put this down to hertz, wherever it was, and grab the power cord and plug it in. It'll tell me 60 hertz. I only have to put one probe in it. I don't even have to put the other one in. Measure the frequency. Okay, let me grab a transistor or a diode. We'll do the diode test. Again, there's not a lot to show you. And we'll do some capacitor measurements as well. Check the capacitors. See how they, how they display on here compared to the fluke. Got a transistor. It's an NPN transistor. Base collector emitter. So, being NPN positive terminal on the base and we can measure our forward drop 0.558 and 0.56 compare it to the fluke point five four and point five four so it's close battery on the fluke is probably getting a bit weak too but uh, it does measure transistors no problem and of course the emitter to collector would be open because this transistor is good so I can measure bipolar transistors just like that and if we do the reverse of course it's open with the negative on the base because it's an NPN transistor so there you go measures transistors no problem Last will be the capacitor test. I'll grab some caps out of my case here and uh, we'll just measure them and see how it uh, stacks up. So this first one's a 300, I think it's a 330. It's a 330 microfarad. And for capacitating, I, I believe I have to select it manually on here. I don't know that it does that automatically. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So here's the setting for capacitors negative, positive, three hundred and eighteen point five microfarads. Flukes measuring three twenty seven. Oh, three twenty-four, three twenty-three, it's settling in. Three twenty-two. Again it's a three hundred and thirty microfarad cap. So 322 on the fluke, and I think that's what we had on this one as well, 322. There you go. Pretty close. Next one. We'll grab this big bad boy here. What is this one? This is uh, 1,000 microfarad, 63 volt. So 1,000 microfarad. There it is, and it switches to MF, not microfarad, but millifarad, I guess. So it's uh, 1.008, or 1,008, 1,006 microfarads. And again, we look at the same thing on the fluke. The fluke will measure the same. We'll grab a small one as well, down in the picofarad range, or nanofarad. There you go, 1,004. So it measures exactly the same, which I fully expected. That it would. If I take a small one like a 0.47, I think I got a 0.47. I'm gonna get some smaller ones in this too, but this one is a 0 0.47, and it says 470 nanofarads NF, which is 0.47 microfarads. On this other one on the fluke. 0.47 microfarads. First I have a 0.0047, I believe this one is. 
and it shows 0 0.008. It's supposed to be 0 0.0047. Point zero zero five. That's as accurate as the fluke will measure that. Well, how is this one going to compare? It's measuring nanofarads, four point nine, which is point zero zero four nine. So it's measuring it with more accuracy than my fluke, but then again, it's newer, so I would expect that. The other one I've got here is a point zero zero eight two. I only grabbed a couple of these because it's going to be accurate. Notice I'm only touching one probe and the other side I'm not touching. So point this is point oh oh eight two and shows it says eight point three four. So that's close enough. Eight point two would be perfect. But fluke showing the same thing the fluke shows 0 0.008 so that's the capacitor measurement I think I've gone over everything on here there is a light on here too um, backlight is adjustable press and hold the hold key till it beeps two seconds and then you can adjust the brightness of the backlight right from full brightness to literally right out completely. Five brightness levels. There's zero. And press and hold to lock that display in. It has an auto power off feature too so if you don't use it for a few minutes it will shut off and um, it shuts down after 15 minutes and I guess I should mention the maximum voltage 750 volts AC 600 volts DC and when you're testing capacitors be sure you discharge them first they can not have any charge on them or you blow up the meter or you could and that applies to my fluke as well they have to be discharged before uh, measuring them um, don't know how to turn that silly light on I can see there's a light there and it says there's a light, but um, it ain't working. Let's pop the back off this thing and just see what, what's inside. Okay, it's two chips. Oh, well, I think I figured out why the light doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I said the guy threw it from like out of the street. Well, the LED is broken. So we'll just solder that back down and then the LED should work. But yeah, it's been ripped right off the board. Thank you very much, private contractor, Amazon delivery idiot, that just pulls up in your Tesla and throws the package from the street. Literally, well, he took about two steps into my driveway and just threw it at the door. Freaking idiots. So I'm just gonna reconnect that wire down to here and. We'll reconnect that wire down to there. See, it's broken. It broke right off, just for, I guess from impact when it landed. It sheared off the, the solder. Idiots. The other side goes to that R47, which is right there.
I have to use better solder than they used at the factory because they used that lead-free crap. We don't use that crap here. Leaded solder all the way. Okay, that um, should make the light work as intended. But here's the the rest of the circuit. It's just a single chip solution as I fully expected that it would be. There's your measurement chip right there. This is going to be the display driver, I'm sure. And the buzzer. And the power goes in here, battery. This is the current loop. It says 10 amps there, but it measures 20. A 20 amp fuse. I've got a shunt across here. So it goes through the fuse, that's the current shunt for measuring. But it's just the run of the mill meter. I'll throw the back on it now and verify that the light works. Now that I've got it back together, I would imagine you just push and hold that light key for two seconds until it beeps. That's what I'm thinking how it works. But it wasn't turning on the light because, well, the light got broken. Probably from the Amazon goof that threw the package. I don't know, was it Amazon? Might have been just some private courier for that matter. But, um, okay, if I press the light button now, there we go. The light comes on. You got a little flashlight for, you know, if you're working in the dark. That can come in handy if you're working in the dark. And then press and hold again, and the light goes out. Uh, that's pretty much all I can show you on this unit because, well, it's a meter. There's not a heck of a lot to show. But um, I'll throw the link in. came from Banggood. I'll throw the link in the description. And I will say thanks for watching. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.